Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another beautiful Cook Along Live. Happy Friday. It has been one heck of a week for me. We've gotten, I've had a lot to do. It's been a really, really busy week. As you notice, I did not post anything about today's Cook Along Live. So uh, several of you reached out and were wondering if I actually was doing one. So yes, I am doing one. And uh, I'm probably going to, I think next week's going to be my last one on a Friday. I think next week we're going to do one for 4th of July, and then I'm going to move them to Sundays so that number one, I have time to prep, and number two, I have time to plan around them, and if I don't have time during the week to make a post, I can do it on Friday. And then on Friday, at least you'll have time on the weekend to grab ingredients, and then on Sunday, what I'll do is instead of doing it so late, 6 o'clock, I'm actually going to be moving it forward. So I might start it at 4 o'clock, or even three o'clock so that people on the East Coast can also join in as well, if you guys are interested in it. I'm getting a lot of really good feedback on it. I'm super, super ha happy that you guys are enjoying. Um, I really, really do enjoy cooking with you and bringing this content uh, to y'all. So it's, uh, it's great, it's a win-win for all of us. So tonight we're gonna be doing roast chicken and we're gonna be making tabbouleh as well. This is a really nice chicken. I actually went and picked it up today because I didn't have any time at all during the week to get anything other than work done. So it's been a really busy week. Not a bad thing. It's been a really good busy week. Uh, yet, yes, I am running a little bit, a little bit on edge right now. Anyway, so we're going to get started with the chicken first. If you haven't already, which you probably haven't because I haven't told you to, get your oven cranked up to 425 or 450. Up to you. I'm actually going to turn mine up to 450 and I'm going to let that guy heat up a bit. While we're waiting on that to warm up, I'm going to move my chicken over slightly. And you'll notice that I've got, well, you'll notice when I switch to the correct view here, uh, a new camera. Well, not a new camera, same camera, different setup. This is going to be a straight down camera, and I'll adjust it. I can actually move it over this way a little bit, like so. And this will be a little bit more traditional if you watch other cooking shows on YouTube. So I've got it kind of temporarily set up right now, and I will figure out a different way to do something uh, a little bit more, not permanent, but like a more standard setup right now. So I've got my iPhone uh, up there because my other camera doesn't have a long enough cord. But let's get started with the cooking. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to start by getting our pan filled up with whatever veggies we need. And I'm going to get some of these guys out of the way. I always do an onion, carrots, and celery. This is the trifecta. This is kind of uh, a standard mirepoix if you're going to be chopping them really fine. In this case, I'm not going to be chopping them really fine. I actually want them to hold the chicken up off the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to give these guys a nice rough dice. And basically chop this onion into three sections this way. I'm leaving the skin on. There's no reason to take it off unless it's super dirty. I'm going to cut it down this way as well. We're just going to scatter that along the bottom. Same thing with the other half of onion. Do three cuts like this, and three or four cuts this way, all the way through. We're not really looking to do a, a very fine dice here. We just want to get all of this on the bottom of the pan. And what this is going to do is prop the chicken up off the bottom and allow any of the juices that come off while it's roasting to not make it soggy. Give it a little bit of airflow underneath the chicken. You can break the onion up a bit. There we are. We're going to do the exact same thing with our celery and our carrot. Now, you might be able to see from the sky cam. You might not be able to see from the sky cam. Hey, Mom, how's it going? Um, I've actually got two cutting boards. So I've got one here for my meat and everything that's going to be associated with the meat. And I've got one on the bottom for the veggies. That way I don't have to clean them immediately. I can just jump from one board to the other. I'm just going to set this on the side over by the sink uh, after I'm done with my meat and then uh, not even worry about it. If you have that luxury, by all means, that's a great way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and actually take off the root ends of these guys. And then same thing, I'm just going to do a very rough dice. These guys also add a little bit of aromatic flavor to your chicken. As they're roasting, the carrots will add a little bit of sweetness, the uh, onion will add a little bit of that bite. 
And it's a sweet onion, so it'll also add a little bit of sweetness as well. But the goal is to kind of fill the bottom of your pan with veggies. At least this is how I cook it. Some people don't add as many veggies as I do. Um, doesn't mean they're wrong, they're just doing it differently. And I'm going to leave all of the leaves and everything from the celery as well. Toss those guys in there. Like so. Now what I'm going to do, we're going to make a really quick uh, spice blend for the chicken. This is pretty much something that I do every time I do chicken. Just a real quick spice blend. I got a little, uh, little plastic container here that I'm going to fill with pretty much equal parts of onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and chili powder. And just kind of eyeball it. If you really want to measure, I would just do equal parts of each. So one to one to one. A tablespoon, a tablespoon, a tablespoon, or a teaspoon, a teaspoon, a teaspoon. Chili powder. You can definitely give your celery leaves to any of your pets that might be interested in eating them. For sure, Felicia, that's a great idea. I don't think my dog, I don't think Fez or Buttercup would be interested. I'm going to put a little bit extra smoked paprika because it gives a little bit of a yummy, yummy, sweet, smoky flavor. There we go. I'm also going to add a pretty generous amount of salt to this. The more salt that you add here, the crispier the skin is going to be. The salt actually draws out the moisture and helps the skin kind of dry out. I don't worry too much about overseasoning chicken if it's like a full chicken roast because it's got the skin on it and it's not going to penetrate if you put it on right before you roast it. You're going to get a very salty skin, but the skin's also going to be nice, dry, and crispy. And if you take that, you know, with a, with a bite of the rest of it, a breast or a leg or whatever, it's going to be perfectly seasoned. I like to kind of close the lid. Any container will work. I use these olive containers from Whole Foods. When I get a bunch of olives, I eat all the olives usually within 20 minutes, which is always sad because I love olives. Uh, and I'll just mix the spice blend. And the cool thing is, if I don't finish using the spice blend, I got more for another chicken. So we've gotten this all mixed up. Now what I'm going to do is I am actually going to come over here and grab a little bit of olive oil. And just kind of do a little drip in the middle. And then I'm going to rub it just to coat the outside of the skin. You don't want too much. You don't want this thing drowning in olive oil. This is really just to kind of get the spice blend to stick. It's also going to help the skin crisp up a little bit because it's going to help the skin, it's going to help the heat of the oven kind of fry the outside of the skin. You can use this with a, with a basting brush if you want. Add a little bit more. There we go, just to kind of get it into the corners here. And one place that people really don't pay attention to is actually the, the back sides of everything. So the front of the breast here, or the top of the breast, I guess, where the um, uh, wishbone is, and then kind of the back of the chicken. A lot of people just kind of neglect that and don't season it, but you want to get seasoning over as much of the bird as you can. You can also do this with butter. So if you've got some melted butter, uh, clarified butter, or just a stick of soft butter, you can totally do this with butter. You can also put it under the skin if you want, and then as it roasts, it'll actually kind of drip into the um, little meat cavities underneath the skin. For a chicken, I do that usually with turkeys because they're bigger, it's easier to get your hand underneath the skin. Uh, with a chicken, I'll usually just kind of do the outside, especially, they also don't roast that long. They're usually only in the oven for uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Bigger birds, maybe an hour and 25 minutes or so. Now I don't have my trusty sink cam set up because it is the camera that I'm using for my overhead shot at the moment. That will be coming back at some point in the future. My longer cable's supposed to get here tomorrow, so bear with me while I rinse my hands off from oil. 
And the reason I'm doing that is so that uh, when I start seasoning my bird, I don't get seasoning all over my, I mean, you're going to get seasoning all over your hand, but this way it just won't stick as, as bad. Yes, sage and thyme are awesome. And um, also uh, rosemary. Uh, I'm actually going to hop outside real quick because uh, I forgot to get it beforehand, but I'm going to put some rosemary in the cavity as well. So this is where you're adding your flavor to the chicken. I mean, you can make it as flavorful or as boring. I guess I shouldn't say boring. You can add as much flavor or you can make it as chickeny as you want. And it's really in how much seasoning you add. I'm not worrying too much about where the seasoning is going off the chicken because it's all landing on this cutting board, which I'm going to rinse off once I'm done. We got this guy. I'm going to try and keep my dry hand dry. Rotate my chicken. Now, the other question that a lot of people ask is, do you trust your chicken or do you just leave it kind of flabby or flaccid or whatever you want, you know, whatever word you want to use? Um, I do kind of trust my chicken. I don't go too crazy with it, but I just do a real quick one at the very end to make sure that the legs kind of stay together. It's really up to you. If you trust your chicken effectively, it actually will cook a little bit better, a little bit more evenly. Um, yet, honestly, if you're in a rush, it doesn't make that much of a difference. You might get slightly crispier ends uh, on your chicken. So if that's actually something that you want to go for, you want crispier ends, uh, don't trust your chicken. There we go. That's a pretty good amount of seasoning. I'm just going to, let's see, grab him this way. If I can grab the arms. There we go. Just get some here on the top. All right, chicken is seasoned, almost. Inside of that leg, and inside of this leg. There we go. Plenty of seasoning on this chicken. So I did say I am gonna truss him. My trussing is actually really simple. All I do is I make a real quick loop in my string. Make, make a loop, let me get this under the camera. Make a standard loop like this. I'm just going to tie this into a knot. So one, two, three, and then tie it into a knot like this. There we go. Now I'm going to measure out about, I don't know, a foot and a half of twine. This stuff is super cheap, so don't get uh, frugal on the twine. So I've got my loop, I've got my other end of twine, I'm actually going to make a different loop like this, this one's sizable, wrap it around one drumstick, like so. And now when I'm ready, I can actually tie up the other drumstick to this one, like this, and keep the cavity together at least. I don't really care too much about the wings, I don't really eat the wings anyway, I usually take them off and use them for stock. Um, but this makes it really easy just to trust the back together. As speaking of the back, we're actually going to take one lemon, cut them in half, into the cavity they go. I always cut diagonally. There's no benefit to doing that. It's just how I've always done it. And we're just going to stick him in that way. Slide him up. It'll kind of make the, the chest perk out. Wings are awesome. Yes, I agree. However, I usually use them in stock, or I guess, you know, sometimes I do save the wings if I'm doing a couple of chickens, and I'll make some chicken wings. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll literally just roast them or uh, air fry them, and then I'll toss them in some sauce. We're going to add those guys in there. I'm going to hop outside real quick. I'm going to grab um, some thyme and some rosemary. Let me rinse my hands off again real fast. Don't want to be touching doorknobs with chicken and spice all over my hands. That's not going to be fun. All right, give me two seconds and we're going to get this guy in the fridge. You coming? Doggo's coming with me. 
How's everybody's week going? Everybody else have a good week? Are you guys doing anything fun this weekend? About 4th of July. Anybody have any good plans for 4th of July? Next week we're going to be doing burgers. Come on, dog. We'll be going straight up grilling. We'll figure out how to get this camera set up outside and we will grill some burgers. But uh, what's your week look like so far? Are you guys having a good one? Mine's just been busy, man. I mean, it's been good busy for sure. I've been, um, I'm a regional tech trainer for Keller Williams Realty. So it's been getting in front of a lot of agents and demos demonstrating our tech. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's very fulfilling, especially when you're able to show agents how to, you know, in improve their businesses around it. Um, and of course, that means that I, I use it on my own business as well, which is great. It's helping me out a lot. So as far as trussing, what I do is I've got this guy here kind of looped up and, and nice and tight. I'll go over the bottom leg. And then I'll just loop it once and then come in between the two legs and then I'll just kind of figure eight it a couple of times. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you can see that. Essentially all I'm doing is making a figure eight. And then when I kind of run out of twine, I'll just wrap it a couple of times around the middle. And that'll make it so that this is not going to pop open. And he's nice and trussed. I don't really care about the wings. What I might do, what I often do I should say, is I actually take them and I fold them backwards like this behind his shoulders. And that kind of keeps his arms contained as well. We'll just do that on both sides. And we got a nice trussed chicken, very simple. Pick him up, put him in the pan. He's actually sitting, yeah, a good inch and a half, two inches, well, probably inch and a half off of the bottom of the pan. And I'm not going to worry too much about touching the pan because this is all going into a 450 degree oven and everything, if there's any germs on my hands from the chicken, uh, they're going to be roasted off <laughs> uh, when it goes in the oven. So pop open the oven, grab this guy, toss him in, and then we can get started on the tabbouleh. Let me just wash my hands real quick again. Now I'm going to let him roast in there for about 25 minutes and then what I'm going to do is turn down the temperature to 375 and let him roast the rest of the way. What that'll do is it'll kind of kickstart the outside burning and caramelizing and uh, won't overcook it when you turn it down. It'll, it'll roast slower for the uh, inside of the chicken, inside of the bird, for the rest of it. Very cool, very cool. And let me get this out of the way. Now tabbouleh is really not all that ingredient intensive. It just takes a lot of time to put it together. It's a lot of chopping. Get you out of the way, rinse off my knife. But I got some tips and tricks to make this go a little bit faster. Oop, and I don't have a bowl for it. That will help. Here we are. Get this lid out of the bowl. Awesome. All right, so we got our bowl. We got our ingredients. It's really just tomatoes, uh, some green onions, some Italian parsley. You can use curly parsley if you'd like. I prefer Italian. Uh, I think it's just a little bit, you get a little bit more bang for your buck. Um, an English cucumber and a couple of lemons and we're going to use some olive oil. I'm actually going to switch to some of the extra virgin olive oil that I have over there for the dressing. And that makes it taste a lot better. We're also going to be using a, uh, it's called bulgur wheat. It's cracked wheat essentially. And you can get it at Middle Eastern stores. Sometimes Trader Joe's or Whole Foods carry it. Um, Trader Joe's or Whole Foods don't generally carry the super fine bulgur wheat, and that's what we want to use here. This is actually, uh, if, you, if you find um, this at a Afghan store or at a Middle Eastern store, uh, they have it graded by number. And this is like number zero, so it's the finest that they have. And you just kind of pour some at the bottom of your, of your bowl. 
Now, this is totally your preference how much you want to put in here. If you want a really, really wheaty kind of tabbouleh, uh, pour more. If you don't really want that much, pour less. Uh, start with a quarter cup or a half a cup and then just kind of do it from there. I just eyeball it every time because for me, um, it's all good. Like I don't, it's a salad, right? So as long as it tastes like tabbouleh, I'm happy. I like to add just enough water to kind of cover this bulgur wheat. And what that's going to do is actually kind of soften it up as it's sitting. This is going to absorb all of this water. You can actually add about like a centimeter of water above the bulgur and it'll probably absorb it all. I'm going to set this over to the side. You guys are going to lose sight of it. Rest assured that it's still over there. I'm not, I'm not hiding it from you. And then I like to start with the tomatoes. And with the tomatoes, I am going to, very similar to how I do my salsa, chop them all into quarters. And then I'm going to remove the seeds because uh, they add a little bit too much liquid to this salad. Unfortunately, these are not tomatoes from my garden, although I did make a fresh salsa yesterday for my sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Rachel. Um, using a couple of tomatoes from my garden, and it was uh, really, really tasty. Now I'm just waiting for the rest of them to ripen up. So we've got our tomatoes all cut into quarters. I like to kind of organize them, I guess, on one side of my cutting board. And then to remove all of the seeds, I switch to a paring knife just because I find it easier. I lay a tomato like this. I start at the stem side, little incision, and then I kind of rock it towards the knife, and I just run the knife up along the skin. And then you get this seed pod here. You can totally use this for stock, for your chicken stock afterwards. Just leave it on the side, um, or you can eat it because it tastes just fine. However, it does not really contribute to the tabbouleh, which is why I rid myself of it. And then as I'm chopping through these, I'm going to take care of all of these seeds before I even start chopping the tomato. If you focus on one task at a time, it'll actually end up going a lot faster. If you were to stop here, grab the other knife, switch, switch over to like dicing this thing up, and then grab the next piece, it'll actually slow you down because you're task switching. So at this point, you're really just getting into the groove of things. I'm just going to listen to some music, think about your life, do all kinds of fun stuff while you do all this chopping. That's really all the salad is. Tabbouleh is just chopping all of these ingredients up, putting them into a bowl, mixing them with the dressing, and eating them. And the more you do this, the quicker you'll get at it. The first couple of times I did this, it took me like several hours to finish a bowl of tabbouleh. Now I can do it in just about 45 minutes, depending on how much stuff I have. So yeah, how was your, um, how was your week? Let me, let me read some of this chat while I'm, while I'm slicing some of these. Okay, doing laundry, resting from yesterday. Oh yeah, man, mom went nuts yesterday with all the food she made for Rachel's birthday. That was impressive. Two desserts, um, homemade tacos, everything from scratch, epic, and it was delicious. Ooh, pizza on Sunday. That's a good idea. So if I'm going to be doing things on Sunday, the cool thing about that is things like pizza are now possible because I can actually show you making the dough earlier in the day, and then I can show you making the pizza with the dough later in the day. So it's kind of cool because, you know, now I have the entire day to kind of do recipes. Um, another option I was thinking of is things that take a little bit longer to do, such as pizza or maybe even sourdough. Um, I can put together like a video for the week where you guys can watch it during the week and take care of the steps, you know, prior to Sunday, maybe Saturday night, Friday night. And then Sunday night, we actually do the process of cooking whatever it is that we're cooking with what we've prepped. Because a lot of things like beef wellington, if you guys want to do a beef wellington, we have to put that together over a couple of days. Now, it's not a couple of entire days of working. It's like an hour here, an hour there. But, you know, a day in advance to get the puff pastry ready, a day in advance to get the uh, meat kind of pre-seared and ready to go. Then the day of, you're putting it together, roasting it, and having a feast. So it, it opens up a lot of possibilities. 
It also allows more people, I think, to kind of get in on the fun, especially if I'm hosting these earlier. All the people on the East Coast who can't join because it's, you know, 9 o'clock for you guys right now, you guys will be able to join if I start these at 3 or 4. And I'm just really going to do this, you know, section at a time. So like I said, this is really kind of getting into a rhythm. And again, the, the more you have, the more practice you have with this, the quicker you'll get with it. And I've been doing this for, you know, a while, but I picked up the knife skills pretty quick. I'd say maybe a couple weeks, a month. I had the knife skills down to where I was going a lot smoother than I used to. And really the key is making sure that you are using your, your hand like almost like a, a claw like this and then putting it on top of something because then you can actually use your knuckle as uh, a brace or a point to start with and then you're just running the knife up against your knuckle it's very very difficult if you keep your fingers tucked in to cut yourself i mean you literally have to point the knife backwards um and you can go a lot quicker but go slow when you start, you know, take your fingers, make sure you get this claw looking thing, kind of see how they can work around whatever you're trying to push down under the board, knife up against your knuckle, maybe down, maybe down, move it a little bit, move it a little bit, and then you'll just kind of start getting faster and faster, and then before long you'll just be able to kind of like mow through things, which definitely, definitely makes this process a lot less tedious. Now, if you are in a rush, you can totally chop your tabbouleh super, super coarse and just make like very, very uh, thick chopped tomatoes. Just kind of give the parsley a once over, chop big chunks of onions. Um, I like to call that tabalad, and that's what I do when I'm feeling super lazy, but I want to eat tabbouleh. <laughs> you still start with the same amount of ingredients. You just chop them very coarse. And then if you have more time or if it's a special occasion, you can get them, you know, you can take the extra time to chop things super fine. Tonight I'm kind of going like more on the fine end, but not super, super fine. Now another thing that I find is I usually get two bunches of parsley because sometimes one bunch isn't enough. It's usually four tomatoes, one bunch of uh, onions, one cucumber, and then two bunches of parsley. And then I get two lemons just because I want to see, again, one might not be enough for the dressing, whereas two I know that I'm going to have enough. It also depends on how much you like parsley. If you really don't like parsley, just stick with the one. You'll get the flavors of everything else, a little bit of parsley in the background, and it's still tabbouleh. Don't let anybody tell you any different. And you can also stack these guys on top of each other, like two like this. It just becomes a lot more difficult to kind of manage how thin, because the top one, like you're seeing, is starting to slide around. So don't, don't do that unless you're really pressed for time, but it is an option. <laughs> Anybody excited for Hamilton coming out next week? I'm super excited. I saw a bootleg version of it from like the second row um, of the original production. It was good, but uh, can't wait for the version that's going to be on Disney. Looks like it's a much higher quality production. <laughs> We're almost done with the tomatoes. I don't remember how long ago I put that chicken in because I did not set a timer. So I'm just going to go check on it once I'm done with the tomatoes. Yeah, you can definitely use the center of the tomato to make salsa, Annika. That's a great idea. Um, although for tomatoes, I also use the outside. I, I throw away the, the middle as well. I honestly think the middles of tomatoes are useless. Um, 
I will throw them in stock if I'm making, you know, chicken stock later tonight, uh, which I'm not tonight, but generally speaking, some, a lot of times I do. And uh, if I do, I'll use it for the stock. Now, the cool thing about homegrown tomatoes is you don't really get as much of the gooey center inside the tomato. You get more meat, uh, depending on the variety, of course. The ones that I grow, generally, I get more meat. And I'll take those and I'll cut the whole thing up. Like, I'll, I'll slice it into steaks and then basically julienne the whole tomato down. That works really well. But for the store-bought ones like these, meh. The center is not worth my time. I'm a snob. Sorry. It's like people who don't like watermelon because they feel like it's 90% water. I don't understand them. So if you don't understand the fact that I don't like the tomato centers, eh, you know what? We're just going to have to agree to disagree. I will always eat the salsa you make with the tomato centers or the tabbouleh you make. I'm just not going to do it myself. Cool, tomatoes are done. We're gonna switch right over to the cucumber. Now, to skin or not to skin, that is the question. That's really up to you. Um, I prefer the skins to come off, yet if you prefer to leave the skins on, they're tabbouleh. Do what you want. Mmm, that's a good cucumber. I just skin this guy right into the garbage bin over here. And I have let go of many a cucumber into the garbage bin, which is never, never fun. Especially when it's the last cucumber and then you have to go to the store and get another one. There we go, cucumber peeled. I'll put this over here, wash it later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in order to make this long and gigantic thing more manageable, I'm actually going to cut it in half. And then the way that I chop a cucumber up is I half it. And then for both halves, I'll pull them really close to the front end of my board. And then I'll just make sure that my finger's on top, so I'm not going to cut them. And slice horizontal slices this way. Lay them on top of each other, set them aside. Next, same thing. Mm. Now don't worry too much about how thin you're cutting them this way. Because what's going to happen is when you cut them this way and this way, that's where you're going to control the size of the dice. So this is, I can probably cut this a little bit one more time. Like so. I might be able to get two more slices out of this guy. <clears throat> there we go. One. And two. And I'm just going to... Enjoy as I'm going. Cool. So now I've got a stack of flat cucumbers. On the edges, I'm not going to worry too much about getting super close to the edge. I'm just going to cut down, like so. And then I'm just going to keep cutting vertical slices. I'm going to hold them in place and move the knife out of the way. Now again, if you don't have a lot of time, you can just like super coarsely cut, cut up all these cucumber pieces. But we're waiting on a roast chicken tonight, so I'm going to take a little bit extra time. There we go. <laughs> and so you get these really long, slender sticks of cucumber. And one of the cool things with these English cucumbers is you don't have very many seeds in them. So you don't have to like scoop out any seeds. You're not getting a lot of extra fluid, a lot of extra water. The tabbouleh is going to be pretty moist once you have all the dressing in there and everything's kind of had a chance to kind of marinate. So I like to get the English cucumbers, the ones that are in the plastic wrap, because they just lend themselves a little bit better to this. Once again, I'm doing the claw thing with my hand and now I'm just making a huge claw 
I'm just trying to kind of corral everything together. It's not perfect. You're going to have outliers. You're going to have things that kind of go out to the side. But now I literally can just like chop very quickly through this cucumber. And all I'm doing is moving my hand back very, very slowly and getting a pretty fine dice on these. There we go. Cucumbers chopped. Half of it anyway. That's going straight in. We'll do the other half. And the other half, I'm just going to go full speed. Which isn't very much faster than what I just did, but it sounds impressive when I say I'm going to go full speed. <laughs> there we go. Cut down. Over here. Chop this way. There we are. One. Same thing with number two. Good to go. There's these guys. One's getting pretty thin on his own. Got a couple pieces to stack on. There we are. Move you over here. And we'll just go choppity chop. Like so. And of course I have little pieces of cucumber falling off. My dog is uh, getting some snacks. For some reason he's always ravenous right about this time of day. See, my stack of cucumbers just kind of fell over, so I'm going to do the best I can. I'm not going to worry too much about being perfect. Because honestly, you're not, gonna, you're not really going to notice. <laughs> there we go. And the same thing. Just chop right through it. So tabbouleh is the first thing, <clears throat> apart from Kraft mac and cheese, that I really, really took the time to master. And this is something that my Nana used to make for me. Well, used to make for the family, but I absolutely loved it when I was a kid. I'm going to just grab a spoon and kind of mix that together. Um, now when she died, uh, I didn't know how to make it. I didn't have a, a recipe, really. I just kind of knew what the ingredients were. Kind of sort of knew what the ingredients were. I asked my dad just to make sure that I got them all right. And then I went and uh, just kind of dove into learning knife skills so that I could figure out how to make this. So you'll notice that as we're mixing this together, we're getting some of that bulgur kind of integrated in with all of the veggies. And the reason I do this at this stage, this bulgur is softened because it has absorbed all the water that I had put, there, put in there at the beginning. However, if you keep doing this, it's actually going to start drawing some moisture out of the veggies as well. So it'll just make it that much softer when you're ready to serve it. There we go. I'm also going to give it a little bit of help with some salt. I don't add too much salt at this point. Just kind of a dust over everything. We'll need to add some more later, but this will help some of the moisture get pulled out of all of the vegetables that are in here. And these are really the moisture rich vegetables that are going to be in here right now, the cucumber and the tomato. The onion and the parsley, they've got some moisture in them, but they're not like, you know, tomato is is, is very water heavy. Um, parsley is not. There we go. Might give it a little taste because I'm hungry. Yeah, that's good. Not, not super salty. I'm going to check my chicken. Mmm. That looks good. I'll go ahead and turn him down. Oops, not broil. I'll turn him down to 
375. And I'll let him finish baking in there at that temperature. Onions, next. The quickest way to clean onions. Pile them on your board, straighten them out so that all of the roots are about lined up. Take off that bottom quarter of an inch. All onions are going to have one flappy bit that you can very easily kind of pull off. If you do that, most of the dirt actually is gone. Now I always check the back side here to make sure that there's none in the actual uh, stem of the onion. And then I'll give these a quick rinse. If you find one like this one that doesn't have any dirt on it at all, you can just leave it whole. But if you see the ones that have the dirt on them, it's usually, like in this one here, you can see, well maybe you can't see, but there is dirt in there. You can see the little uh, darker spot. If I pull this off like this, the dirt is now over here. Now it's gone. And then when I rinse it, anything that's left, any extra granules are going to go down the drain. And honestly, it doesn't take away from the amount of onion you're going to have from the end. It doesn't like you're if you left them on or didn't leave them on, you're not going to notice the difference. And then this one here, see this one's kind of already got cut off at the bottom here. We're going to do that one instead. Nice. Let's go rinse this, and I'm going to catch up on chat. I'm going to show you a real cool way to cut these guys so that they don't roll away on you. There we go. Rinsed. No dirt or silt in the stems. So what I'm going to do with the onions is I'm going to hold them with all of their stems aligned vertically like this. And I'm going to cut from the bottom part and just cut the onion in half like this. And now you have two halves of the onion. I'm going to flip one the opposite direction so that they actually uh, lay in the same direction. They're both going this way. See if I lay them both in the in the same direction, one's going this way and one is coming this way. So if you flip one around, they just mirror each other, which is what you want. I'm just going to set him aside for now and go on to the next one. And what that's going to do is give you a pile of onions that is going to be very easy to slice through because none of the little bits are going to go rolling off the cutting board away from you. So if you don't need the aesthetic look of... Um, you know, full rings of green onions. This is a great way to chop green onions up and maximize your yield. Now, if you still need some rings, what you can do is do this with like half of them and then cut the other half in a, a full, full onion. Then you'll get all the flavor of the onion in there and you'll still get those rings uh, for people who are looking for them. For things like ramen. Or you can just cut the stems if you want that way. Or the whites. I mean, I guess it depends on, you know, which, which side you're looking for. There we go. I'll read the chat while I'm doing this. Meatballs and pizza fried chicken. Fried chicken is something that's been um, asked for. Mark, were you talking about garlic on the chicken? The uh, chicken I put garlic salt on, or garlic powder on, so it does have garlic. I didn't use fresh garlic, though, no. You can, though. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually just half a gar garlic clove, garlic clove, and I'll put that into the cavity of the chicken. I don't have a, a garlic clove. I forgot to pick one up earlier when I ran out to grab the chicken. Full disclosure. It's been a busy week. When you're doing this kind of a slice, just make sure that you're keeping your fingers out of the way of your knife. Um, it does not feel nice to slice through your finger. I have done it. <laughs> not any time recently, but uh, just go slow if you're, not, if you're not confident. Let's see, we'll do you that way, and I got one more here. Uh, 
I like to kind of grip right where the knife point is because then the blade is already ahead of my fingers, if that makes sense. There we go. Got a nice pile of onions. Yeah, I'm actually probably going to end up doing fried chicken, not next week. Next week we're going to be doing hamburgers, but uh, the, maybe the week after or the week after that, uh, we'll get some fried chicken going. Fried chicken and onion rings um, are, are some things that I've been asked to do. So same thing here, we're just going to keep our, our hand in a claw and just chop through our green onion as best we can. Now while you're chopping through, keep an eye on the inside of this onion and see if, you're, if you can notice any little bits of silt because this is where you're going to be able to say, oh, oop, you know, I found a bit and then go wash it if you find any. Um, and that, you know, that has happened to me. So this is kind of your last pass to make sure that you're getting clean onions here in your tabbouleh. Go ahead and finish chopping this bad boy up. And I always slow down as I get to the end because there's a lot of onion, or I should say there's less onion, but it's getting like wider. It's like squirreling out on you because onions are pretty thin. So I like to go a little bit slower and just make sure that I'm not getting my fingers in front of my blade. There we go. Bunch of green onions all chopped up. We're going to add it to our bowl. And we're just going to go ahead and mix it in. There we are. And we're on to our last but certainly not least ingredient, the parsley. Now I like to keep the parsley bunched up and then run it under some cold water underneath the fountain to get everything, like all the silt and everything, off of it. And then I let it kind of drain in a colander or in uh, like a paper towel on the sink. And then what I do is I kind of take off any like rubber bands or anything that are holding the, the parsley together. And then I'll just hold it downward like this. And I'll just kind of shave the leaves off like so. And in this way you'll get a lot of leaves and a smaller amount of stems. At least the longer stems will be left in a bunch bundle for you. And if there's any that are down by your hand, you can just kind of grab them. You're still going to get some stems down here as well, for sure. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a real quick way to just do stems instead of all stalks. And then if you see anything that looks like it's a little bit too stocky, stalky, go ahead and cut it off. Now, I try to align all of the stems here and all of the leaves, like so. And then we're going to do the tried and true bushel method where you just kind of, they're all aligned this way. I'm just going to try and roll my parsley into like a cigar-ish shape, longwise this way. Let's see, that looks like just a stem. And again, like I'm, I'm kind of auditing it as I go. I'm looking for any silt that I might have missed. I'm looking for any uh, super long or super thick stems uh, to get those out of the way. And then once I kind of have it bundled up like so, this is a super rough course chopping path. But you'll notice that I'm still using the claw hold with my, with my hand. And I'm just going to take my time and cut through this. Now the parsley is really the only part of this that I cut through multiple times. Everything else you can go through once, and then that way you avoid bruising it. But the parsley, it's really, really hard to get a fine dice on this or a fine chop on this on the first go. So what I will do is try and get it as thin as I can on the first go, but I don't worry too much about it. However, now I know that all of the cuts are running this way. So when I come in to cut it the second time, I'm going to put my hands on the front part of my knife kind of hold it down, and then just rock my knife up and down 
on the handle side and just move them, move the knife forward. So you're getting a cross cut on your parsley. There you go. And that's going to get you a lot finer than uh, your first pass for sure. I'm going to try and just kind of go through and grab any big spots that I might have missed. If I see large portions of leaves or whatever. And then I will use my fingers to kind of slide everything off of the blade. And then I'll pile it up like so. And I'll just kind of try and rotate it like this. And what will end up happening is you'll get a, another kind of long line of parsley leaves. Now, these aren't aligned in any way. It's just a bunch of chopped bits. But if you come through and do the rocky thing again, you're just going to make it that much finer. You don't have to press down too hard with your fingers over on this side. You're really just keeping the blade down. And on this side is where you're doing all of the work. There we are. You'll notice that this is getting finer and finer. I might give it one more run through. And then we'll mix it in with the rest of the tabbouleh and we'll start making our dressing. Go ahead and do this. Get it nice and nice and straight. Set the lemons down there. Slide extra parsley off. Whew. Heads in the way of the chopping. Yeah, sorry. Um, at least I don't have a bald spot, right? Not yet. Um, yep. Music on the Amazon App Store. I usually listen to like all. Hey Siri, play some Tool. Series. There we go. And I'll have this on in the background usually. Hey Siri, stop. Don't want to terrify you too much tonight. There we go. Parsley's all done. What else we got over here? Hamilton is really, really cool. The music is awesome. And uh, I've heard the play, well, I've seen the play, but I've heard that the play in person is way more amazing than what I saw. I'm very much excited for that. What else have we got? English cucumber. Yeah, uh, I mentioned while I was chopping it a little earlier, uh, less seeds, so you don't have to scoop it out. Less moisture in the cucumber, so it's not adding soup, you know, a ton of moisture to the tabbouleh. Um, and they're just usually, like, one English cucumber is usually more cucumber than uh, a normal size, like a normal regular cucumber, I guess, or... I don't even know what kind of cucumber you want to call those. Um, a Western style cucumber? I don't know. Um, you usually get a little bit more cucumber out of each product, each piece. So here we go. Tabbouleh is mostly done. Go ahead and kind of dust my hand off here. And then I'm just going to start incorporating everything, mixing it. And what you'll notice as you're mixing things through is you're going to start losing the parsley until it starts mixing back through to the top, and then you'll start seeing it again. It's a really kind of cool thing that happens when you're making tabbouleh. I always am like, oh no, I don't have enough parsley, and then sure enough, just keep mixing. So we have a bowl of tabbouleh that's not dressed. So this is naked tabbouleh. Looks very attractive. I know I want to dive in and eat it. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to test it for seasoning right now. So with nothing, no dressing, no lemon, no oil, we're going to see how salty it is. Because it's really hard to taste for saltiness after you've added the dressing. The lemon really makes it hard. So I will probably add a little bit more salt. You want this to be slightly oversalted, not crazily oversalted, but slightly oversalted. Because when you add the lemon, it's going to cut down on the saltiness. It's going to add that tartness. So I'm going to go a little bit, a little bit heavy on the salt here. Also, tabbouleh traditionally, well, I don't know if it's traditional, but the way that my family always did it is 
you scoop it into romaine lettuce leaves and you eat it almost like a like a salad burrito so the romaine is not seasoned at all the tabbouleh has to kind of carry the flavor through and so you want it to be able to do that maybe just a little bit more I'm going to set this over here to the side. The remix album, is that the one that doesn't have any vocals? Because they've got that one too, which is awesome to sing along to. Um, what am I looking for? I want olive oil. I've got my lemon over here already. So we're going to go ahead and see if my lemon trick works on these guys. These are the first store-bought lemons I've done in a while. Yeah, you can definitely put tomato paste uh, with the water if you want to do that with the bulgur. It adds a little bit more flavor. Um, you know, I recently actually found out that you can buy these tubes of tomato paste. I've seen them on other cooking shows. I've seen that like Gordon Ramsay used them and I've seen a lot of European chefs use them. Um, and I never, I guess never thought to look for them when I was at a store here until I actually did think to look for them. And I was like, oh, they're all the way up at the top shelf in a cardboard box. Very hard to see. There's not very many of them there, at least at the stores that I'm shopping at. Um, you could totally do that with one of those. I don't add tomato paste to the bulgur because usually that means that I'm wasting a six ounce can of tomato paste for like a, a, a tablespoon to go into my tabbouleh. Uh, but now that I found one of those, I, I could actually start doing that again. So you can see that there are a couple of seeds in here, but there's like one or two. And I can literally just scrape the surface with my knife and the seeds fall right out. And now I've got a lemon that I can just squeeze right into here. Now there are a couple of schools of thought, and I've actually tested this a couple of times myself. Do you mix your dressing beforehand and then add it to the tabbouleh? Or do you just squeeze it straight into the tabbouleh and mix it up yourself? Honestly, I don't know that there's a right answer because sometimes when I do it, it tastes better if I squirt right in. And sometimes when I do it, it tastes better when I actually mix it together. So play around with it. Whatever you're thinking, you know, is going to work for that particular day, go for it. Um, but yeah, this is uh, basically we're going we're to put one lemon in here. Again, I've got one seed in this lemon. I can actually scoop it out with my thumb. There goes the seed. Toss. Now I can just squeeze it straight in. And then I just use my thumbs to really kind of get into the, the fleshy bits and squeeze those in. Again, one seed here, I can remove it with my thumb. Sometimes you are gonna have more seeds. However, 90% of the time, actually probably more than that, I think in the past 15 to 16 cook-alongs that I've done with you, um, I've only had one lemon that had more than a couple of seeds in the outer, uh, portion of the lemon. <clears throat> so, same thing with this lemon. You're going to come in about a third of the way and just cut off this edge. And you can see there's only like two seeds. Actually, I think there's three. And a lot of seeds here in the middle. Then you're going to come in a third from the other side. Again, there's only one seed on this side, a few in the middle. And you're just going to kind of do a third on each side here. There's a couple seeds there, but they're going to come out really quick. Third on this side. A couple of seeds there, but they should be pretty easy to find. And we're just going to scoop. Get them out of here. Straight into the garbage, or if you have a little uh, bowl that you're using for your waste, into the bowl. Even the lemons that have a ton of seeds in them, it's super easy to just get the seeds out. And I'm like 90% sure that when you watch a chef squeeze a lemon into a bowl on TV, this is what they're doing if they're not putting their hand in front of the, the lemon. But since we've removed the seeds, we don't have to worry about that. We can just focus on getting the juice out. A little bit of extra upfront work and uh, just makes everything a little a lot nicer, a lot smoother.
Busta Rhymes? No, I have not seen that. I've not seen that remix version. Jimmy Fallon? Oh my gosh. I love Jimmy Fallon. He's a great artist. And a late night host, but I mean, he's, he's really good with it. Yes, please. Yes, send me. Oh, I hear the phone ding. No, I have it on mute, I think. List of the... It's a list of the don't and artists on it. Oh, songs. Oh, I see. Awesome. Yes, please. So I'm going to just kind of scoop the seeds out of this middle bit, which has a ton of juice still in it. I'm just going to squeeze that in. There we are. We're going to give this a quick mix. Now we're going to taste it with the lemon and the salt in it. And we're going to see if the, the balance of the citrusy and the salty is good. Then we will add our olive oil. Now if you mix the lemon and the olive oil on the side, I like to do like a, a 1 to 3 ratio. 3 parts olive oil, 1 part lemon. You probably, if you use like 2 or 3 lemons with that, or two, you know, the juice of 2 lemons, you're probably not going to use all of that dressing on this tabouli. However, it does keep for at least a week. You can use it on another batch that you make later. Do a taste. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So a little bit, little bit overly acidic, but the olive oil is going to handle that. I'm just going to, depending on what olive oil you use, you should be able to put your thumb right over the top here. See, this one's open. Um, if I just poured it, it would be a lot of olive oil, but you can put your thumb on the, on the, on the top there. And then just kind of pull it back a little bit and control the flow. There we go. Let's give this a quick mix through. And see the fruitiness of the olive oil, since we're using extra virgin, you're getting a lot of olive flavor, is going to kind of cancel out a little bit of that lemon uh, tartness. So let's... Give this this mix. I like to spin the bowl to make sure that I'm getting all of the corners in here because usually the corner on the opposite side of my spoon doesn't get very much attention. And then I just make sure I get all of the edges. There we are. Another taste. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yep, you can definitely use lemon zest if you want to add flavor. If you don't like a lot of the uh, tartness, a lot of the acid, if you, don't, if you don't want that, you can also use Meyer lemons. They're sweeter. Actually, I don't like using Meyer lemons because I love the tartness of lemon in tabbouleh, which is why I did not use any of the lemons from my tree tonight because it's a Meyer lemon tree. And so they're not tart enough for me. So we've got a cutting board here that we're just going to kind of towel off real quick. I'm just going to move my garbage can here and slide things straight into it. <laughs> there we go. That's good enough. And we're going to get our lettuce ready for this. Lettuce is super easy. Grab a harder romaine, or if you have a full romaine head that you've grown yourself or gotten from the store, pull out the few outer leaves. And what I like to do is just kind of peel them off like this and stack them. And then as I stack them, I'm checking to see if there's any dirt or grit or bugs or anything else in the, in the leaves. I am going to give these a rinse. If you find that uh, the, the lettuce that you're eating is bitter, I've actually found that if you rinse your lettuce, you have a higher, a much lower uh, chance of getting bitter lettuce. And I think that there's something on the outside of the lettuce when it's not washed that adds to the bitterness. And we're gonna keep these in scoop-sized lettuce leaves. And now we're kind of getting towards the center just gonna chop these guys off like that. That one came off. These guys are still kind of together. This is a garnish for my tabbouleh, right in the middle. 
you guys can't see it up up there. However, if I do this, you guys can see it right there. It looks a little looks kind of cool. Sometimes I'll take some of the lettuce leaves and put put them around the outside as well. Set you back over on the side. I'm going to give these guys a quick rinse. Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't ever do is trim up the root portion. And this is actually the sweetest part of the lettuce leaf. Just trim off a little bit of the bottom. And then you can use either a peeler. Just kind of peel off the outer side. Something like this. Add a little salt or just eat it straight and this is just a delicious little snack. <laughs> of course the bigger the head of lettuce the more substantial this little root piece is going to be but uh, this is this is gold. Add a little salt to it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Toss that. Let me go rinse my lettuce. I'll be right back. There we are. We've got our rinsed lettuce. Found a little bit of a blemish on this leaf, so I'm just going to pull it out. There we go. Tabbouleh is done. Let's go check on our chicken. <laughs> Well, that is one giant chicken, so it's probably going to take a little bit of extra long, uh, a little bit of extra time to finish cooking in there. Maybe another 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, so I'm going to call that a pretty good cook along live for this week. <clears throat> Basically, with the tabbouleh, the best way to eat it: grab a lettuce leaf. Going to scoop our tabbouleh into the lettuce, like so. And if you can cover this and let it marinate in the fridge for an extra hour, all the flavor is going to come together and just taste amazing. Um, but it tastes really good straight away anyway. Here you go. Just start eating. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, one thing I could do, I <clears throat> guess I could pull the chicken out and show you guys how to break it down and then put it back in and finish cooking it. Is that something you guys want to see or you guys want to wait? Is that bully? I mean, I've left it in the fridge for up to a week, but it really kind of depends on how... Yeah, just check it. I mean, the lemon kind of keeps it preserved, so it doesn't, it doesn't go bad very quick. Let's say maybe five days, six days. By the seventh day, you'll probably want to throw it out. Mmm, that is good. Mmm. Yeah, I think I'll wait, and what I'll do is I will um, film breaking down the chicken once it's done cooking, because I don't want to... Don't want to cut up a raw bird. I think that would be a little bit gross. But uh, once the chicken's done, I'll pull it out. Uh, maybe I'll just do another cook along live, like in another 20 minutes, 30 minutes, get that started again. Or I'll just record it and uh, upload it to Facebook and YouTube and show you guys how to, how to break down a chicken. It's actually pretty simple. I think I've shown you guys how to do it before, but I can't remember. We've done so many of these cook alongs. But uh, always a pleasure. Hopefully, you guys had fun joining me on this one. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week for burgers on July 3rd at 6 o'clock. Same bat channel. I guess it's a Rick's channel, isn't it? Same Rick's time, same Rick's place. 
And uh, yeah, enjoy your weekend. Have a great one. We will see you next week to celebrate the 4th of July. Bye, everybody.